Bible study with me. Obedience will draw you closer to God. One of the things that many have earnestly sought after is how to draw closer to God. Some try to do it by keeping the commandments. Some through prayers and fasting. Some through penance and self-denials. Well, those may be helpful in some ways. But the question is what exactly does God demands or requires for an effective and closer relationship with men? God answered this question in part in the book of Micah 6 verse 8, but as you keep listening you will get the whole truth. Micah 6 verse 8 says, He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God? God gave four conditions or requirements here. Justice, love, mercy, and humidity. In other words, obedience to the aforementioned requirement can endear and establish a closer relationship between God and man. Well, while obedience has been adjudged to be very crucial and imperative in the establishment of a cordial and harmonious relationship between God and man, suffice to say also is that there are other dimensions of it, as we shall be looking into subsequently in this video. Of a truth is that, God himself desires closeness or proximity with man. In the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 8, we saw how God visits his first man Adam, in the cool of the day, in a bid to relate with him. That alone is evidence of God's love for closeness with man. Although not without boundaries. Because, for any relationship to flourish and be sustained or otherwise, there are always boundaries. The dos and the don'ts. The turn-ons and the turn-offs. That's to say that, there are always things that make or mar any relationship. And there are also the things that maintain and nourish the relationship. Things that if they are inconstant, and abundantly in supply, the relationship flourishes. And when a relationship flourishes, particularly a relationship with God, there are lots to gain. And the bulk of the gains is on the side of men. When you obey God, it entitles you to the following gains or benefits. 1. You're guaranteed all-around protection. 2. Supply of both physical and bodily needs. 3. Expulsion of anything that constitutes a danger to us. All of the three guarantees are contained in the book of Exodus chapter 23 from verses 25 to 27. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread, and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren, in thy land, the number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee, and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come, and I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. That can only come at the instance of obedience. Because, obedience draws God closer to us. And when God comes closer to you, he doesn't come alone, he comes with his entourage, of blessings. And the entourages of God include blessings without sorrow. We can see that in the book of Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Prosperity, in the book of Job chapter 36 verse 11. Job chapter 36 verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity, and their years in pleasures. Obedience also attracts you to God's love. And you know what it means to be loved by God. This is different from the general love of God for the world, as described in John chapter 3 verse 16. This is additional or extra love of God, compelled by the act of acceptable obedience. This type of love is contained or described in John 14 verse 21. It says, He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Obedience is also proof of our faith and trust in God. James 2 verse 24. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. So it takes the work of obedience to prove faith. James 2 verse 17. Says. Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. So our works of obedience are the evidence of our faith. 
Obedience is also a form of worship to God. Malachi chapter 2 from verses 1 to 2. And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. If ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to heart, to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings, yea, I have cursed them already, because ye do not lay it to heart. Obedience also earns us God's financial blessings. We can see this in the book of Job. Chapter 36 verse 11 Job chapter 36 verse 11 If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity, and their years in pleasures. Obedience also facilitates and enhances our intimate and harmonious walk with God. Joshua 1 verse 8 This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Of all that the Bible recorded, that all their walks with God were made possible by their obedience. Abraham for instance, got the blessing of the fatherhood, at the instance of his prompt and unquestionable obedience. You can see it in the book of Genesis chapter 22, from verses 2 to 19. God called Abraham, 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 take your son, your only son Isaac and go and sacrifice him for me at a place I will show you. The Bible says, early in the morning, he set out, with his son Isaac prompt and unquestionable obedience. And because of that, God says, in Genesis 22 from verses 15 to 18. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. And said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. The Bible recorded that Abraham obeyed God so much, that his obedience of faith alone, was inputted to him as righteousness. Romans chapter 4 verse 3. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. What about our Lord Jesus Christ, the perfect example of obedience and what obedience can fetch? In Philippians 2 verses 8 to 11, the Bible says, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Because of his obedience to the point of death on the cross, it earned him a name above every other name. A name that, at its mention, every knee bows and every tongue confesses his lordship. A name that one can run to for safety. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous runneth into it, and is safe. A name with powers and authority, to expel and cast out devils. Mark chapter 16 verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe, in my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. A name that with it, you can get anything from God. John 14 verse 14. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. All these came at the instance of absolute obedience. I can say that, there is really nothing that God may withhold from you, if you can obey Him completely and promptly. The best way to endear oneself to any person or personality, is by doing or giving Him that which He values so much, or that He has chosen as His most preferred. God has chosen obedience over any other things. So if any really desires a closer walk with Him, then obedience is the way. In the book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 7. God says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. This is a call for obedience, 
for a possible renewal of a soured relationship or closeness with God. He says, no matter how far away you might have gone from him, this call is for you to return. He says, returns to me, start to obey me, and I will walk with you again. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 clarifies this when he says, If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. This is a great assurance of a bountiful welcome back package of blessings, for every returnee. He says if you can obey and return, the best awaits you. I love God. What a loving, generous and magnanimous Father. Despite all our mistakes and derailments, He still calls us for reconciliation, and a promise of goodly packages, and requiring only obedience from us. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. And he will begin another closer, enhanced and better relationship with us. If we can obediently return. Thank you, Jesus. Been that as it may. God still doesn't compel or force obedience on men. He allows men the free will, to choose whether to obey him or not but will always make known to men, the consequences of the choices they may make. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 gives credence to this. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19, God says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. That has been the way of God the right of choice or right to choose. Although God has all it takes, the powers and authorities to enforce or compel obedience and compliance, but he doesn't usually do so. He allows men to make their choices. This principle has been very important, especially as it relates to obedience and a relationship with God. He allows man makes his choice to obey God or not obey him, to relate with God or not to relate with God and the level at which he wants to relate with God. In each choice, God also makes known to man the pros and cons of each choice. The requirements of each choice. If we choose intimacy, cordiality, or a closer walk with God, he has given us what it demands or what is required. And the requirement is nothing more than absolute obedience to his words as found in the scriptures, or as he might instruct us from time to time. Obedience is very cardinal for any business with God, particularly in getting into a closer relationship with God. This is largely so because the eyes of God do not behold iniquity, and iniquity is a product of disobedience. It is important, however, that we point out that obedience is not the same as salvation, neither do we intend to equate obedience with salvation. But the two go together. While salvation brings reconciliation between God and man, it takes obedience to accept Jesus Christ who gives salvation. As we see in John chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible says, But as many as received him, to them gave ye power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Here you see how salvation and obedience are interwoven. Obedience is required to accept, and without accepting, no amount of obedience can be valid or validated. And since obedience is required to accept or gain salvation, it therefore cannot be out of place to say that one cannot do without the other. Because it takes obedience to accept salvation, and obedience without salvation cannot be validated. That is to say, that any act of righteousness, done outside faith, in the redemptive work of Christ, is not acceptable or valid before God. This was highlighted in Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6, it says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. And in the book of Romans, chapter 3 verse 23, it says, For all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. What both scriptures are saying is that, you cannot get closer to God, or make your way right with Him by suddenly starting to obey him without firstly, identifying with the finished work of Christ. This is because all have failed in obedience, even from birth. Except for Christ who although without sin died, the death of sinners that through faith in him, they can be inputted with his righteousness, 
because only Jesus Christ, who was able to meet all of God's requirements, concerning obedience can salvage us, by inputting His righteousness on us. And until then, no amount of obedience or observance of the law, can put us right with God. In other words, it is salvation that approves our obedience, or that makes our obedience worthwhile, and acceptable to God. Without it, our obedience is like a filthy rag before God. Because already we were born in sin, and there is no denial of that. David said in the book of Psalms 51 verse 5. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. It was for this, that God had to make an escape route for man, by sending his only begotten son Jesus Christ, as a sacrifice of propitiation for sin. So that through faith in him, we can be saved. John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What the Bible is saying here, is that salvation is by faith, and not by obedience, for all have already failed the test of obedience. This concept was succinctly captured in the book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. In the book of Titus chapter 3 verse 5, the Bible puts it another way. It says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration, and renewing of the Holy Ghost. And in Romans 10 from verses 9 to 10, it still makes it even clearer. When it says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. From all of the foregoing, it is evident that we cannot truly obey God without being saved. It is only after we are saved, salvation, that we can truly obey God, and our obedience will count. Then and only then can we draw closer to God, as facilitated by our obedience. Why does drawing nearer to God require obedience? One may ask. Because, obedience is a multifaceted factor, in God's dealing with man. Besides, it is the act of keeping God's commandments. It has other benefits or advantages. 1. Bin God's approved good entry behavior into business with him. Obedience is God's approved way of walking with a man. In fact, he commanded the saints of old, to be blameless in their walks with him. Blameless in this context means, fully following all his instructions without wanting in any. 2. It is God's preferred approach for relationships. God seeks our obedience over whatever we may have to offer him. In 1 Samuel 15 verse 22. The Bible recorded thus, and Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. This shows that God chooses obedience, over everything a man may have to offer him. So obedience is the God-approved right entry behavior, into a closer relationship with him. We have to obey and keep obeying God, to avert the negative consequences of disobedience. Job chapter 36 verse 12 says, But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword, and they shall die without knowledge. But that shall not be your portion in Jesus' name. So why does our obedience matter so much to God? Because, it is our obedience after salvation that brings us blessings, favor with God and men, progress and prosperity, financial wealth, marital wealth, relationship wealth, health and vitality, longevity, miracles, signs and wonders, and every good thing that God can offer. So we must endeavor to live a life full of love and obedience to God. To keep gaining and soaring higher in life. For without it you may not receive any good from God. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son Jesus Christ, who had come and reconciled us to you. That through obedience we can now please you, and receive the blessings of obedience. 
Heavenly Father, even at that, we do not have the power to obey you, without the help of your Spirit. Therefore, dear Lord, we ask that you fill us afresh with the power of the Holy Spirit, so that we will be able to walk with you. In the like of the men whom you approved, and commended for their impeccable walk with you. Guard and guide us through your Holy Spirit, so that we will be able to please you every day of our lives. Thank you, Lord, for answering us, for we pray with thanksgiving. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We appreciate you immensely for joining us today to share the Word of God. We share the Word of God on this channel every week and you are invited to be one of us. Here is another video titled, Peaceful Prayer Before You Sleep. Carefully handpicked for you to watch next. Click on the video to watch now, for we know that it will enrich you immensely. Also, if you are new here, you may consider subscribing. And leave a comment in the comment box telling us you have subscribed. We will definitely respond to you immediately. God bless you.